This is News Today with WDW News Today. I'm Tom Corliss of WDWNT.com, and here now are the top Disney Park stories from around the world for April 4th, 2022. Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind will open at Epcot on May 27th, 2022, during Memorial Day weekend. Let's all, let's all pretend to be surprised now, as if Jeff Morrell didn't already announce this. But of course, yes, it has come to pass. A new commercial debuted as part of the announcement. You can watch it on our website. Uh, the teaser starts like a regular Walt Disney World 50th anniversary commercial before it quote-unquote glitches. And there's text reading space and time or rewinding. Get to Epcot. Help the Guardians save the galaxy. Rocket is seen launching the Guardian ship into space. The commercial starts at the Nova Corps Earth Outpost, which may or may not be the lounge above Test Track at Epcot. <laughs> it is. That's where they filmed it. But either way, Spaceship Earth's in the background and people are glitching and rewinding and disappearing and... Again, you're invited to help the Guardians save the universe again uh, in your Star Jumper vehicle from the attraction. Depending which version of the ad you see, there's different music, too. And if you look around enough in those commercials, you'll find two references to the Epcot of old. Both of them in the cockpit of uh, Peter Quill's ship, the Milano which is not named after a cookie. It's named after Alyssa Milano, by the way. Next to Peter are two dinosaur toys. The dinosaurs are a nod, of course, to the climatic battle at the end of the Universe of Energy's dinosaur sequence, uh, where the T-Rex and the Stegosaurus would fight. Uh, there are more references to the old attraction expected uh, inside the Guardian's ride. And behind Peter is a vintage Epcot Center mug with its colorful stripes. How cute is that? Walt Disney World President Jeff Volley went on to confirm that there will be cast member previews of Cosmic Rewind before it opens on May 27th. He did not announce specific dates for the previews, just writing on Instagram that soon, cast members will have several opportunities to learn and experience the wonders of Xandar Pavilion and all it has to offer. Media previews followed by Club 33 previews are set to happen during the first week of May, so cast previews will likely happen uh, some in late April and some probably continuing into May. Uh, cast members may be able to bring friends and family to those later previews, at least. Uh, no details out there yet. Speaking of no details, uh, annual pass holders, Disney Vacation Club members, and D23 Gold members, uh, it has been confirmed we'll get previews as well. But again, no dates were provided uh, for any of these previews. Uh, emails were sent out to va Vacation Club and pass holder. But again, no dates just yet. We'll let you know as soon as we know. After two and a half months of just Doc, another one of the Seven Dwarfs has a specialty ice cream cone at Storybook Treats in the Magic Kingdom. Sneezy, because who doesn't want ice cream, ice cream related to someone who's sneezing? All the Seven Dwarfs specialty cones are in honor of the 50th anniversary. They're all shown on the menu, but Sneezy is the only one available now. Grumpy was the first one, and then uh, there was Doc, and now there's this chocolate Barks root beer soft serve in a cone with a chocolate belt buckle and a chocolate face for $5.99. What does root beer have to do with Sneezy? I have no idea. Don't know. Meanwhile, Pinocchio Village House of the Magic Kingdom has two new menu items in, in honor of the 50th, featuring the flavors of Mexico. There's roasted street corn flatbread and a tres leches cake inspired by It's a Small World. The roasted street corn flatbread has roasted corn and peppers drizzled with cilantro mayonnaise for $11.99. The tres leches cake is made of toasted coconut and coconut cake. Now says adios, says, you know, that's, you know, how you say goodbye. We're where this cake is from. It costs $6.19. The review of all these items on our website. I hope they keep traveling through all the scenes of the ride. That would be very cute. Star Cadets and Galactic Heroes alike may have to bid farewell to the current Buzz Lightyear themed attractions at Disney parks around the world. Because should the upcoming Pixar movie Lightyear succeed, the plan is to update Walt Disney World's Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger spin attraction. The more realistic aesthetic of the new film would fit better in the updated Florida Tomorrowland, which has gone uh, more white, more like the 70s Tomorrowland, which had a more realistic view of the future. But, of course, the clean aesthetic that's coming in with Tron Lights Like a Run and the possible Wreck-It Ralph attraction centered around playing video games, um, it would make more sense to not have an attraction based on, you know, toys. Um, but, of course, uh, Space Ranger's been opened in 1998. It's the oldest version of all the Toy Story shooter rides in the world. Uh, the second generation of those began uh, in the mid-2000s, the ones where you could actually lift the gun off the holster and the targets light up and all sorts of things like that. That opened at Disneyland and Tokyo Disneyland and Disneyland Paris. And then the third generation 
of those attractions began with uh, Buzz Lightyear Planet Rescue at Shanghai Disneyland in 2016. And of course, when they removed uh, Astro Blasters from Hong Kong Disneyland, they replaced it with Ant-Man and the Wasp Nano Battle, which has a lot of similarities in technology, at least, uh, to Buzz Lightyear Planet Rescue in that uh, the targets are projection-based uh, and they react to when you hit them and you have a screen-based scoreboard and, and uh, those kinds of things. So this cleaner aesthetic already exists at Planet Rescue. It kind of exists at Ant-Man and the Wasp Nano Battle. The expectation would be an update is long overdue at the Florida attraction. And so if this movie is successful, not only would you finally be able to update the attraction and clean it up, but it also would fit better in a new Tomorrowland. So we'll have to wait and see if this actually happens. It'll all depend on the success of Lightyear, but it's already in development. It's already a distinct possibility, and we'll, keep you, we'll let you know uh, when we know more about it. Another sinking log incident occurred at Splash Mountain in the Magic Kingdom. A log previously sank in August of 2020. Uh, you, on our website, you can watch the guests evacuate the ride vehicle in the TikTok shared by user Dakota Anglin. In the video, the log is uh, in one of the outside sections of the ride, partially submerged in water, and its final row completely full of water. Other logs are stopped in front and behind the submerged log, and according to comments, the incident happened on Monday, March 28th. That's scary. I would probably jump out too at that point. I don't know. The Mickey Balloon Spirit Jersey, part of the new series of 50th Anniversary Vault Collection items, has arrived at Disney World. The jersey is white and patterned with colored Mickey balloons, like used to be on the uh, Walt Disney World shopping bags back in the 70s. They're green, orange, pink, yellow, and blue. Walt Disney World is also patterned uh, over the jersey in different colors. And on the front left is the green silhouette of Florida with an orange Cinderella castle representing the location of the Magic Kingdom. Uh, next to Florida is the Retro D Globe uh, logo, and the D is pink while the Mickey globe in the center is black, blue, pink, and yellow. The balloons have a grid pattern to them, which is retro style, uh, and Walt Disney World is on the back over uh, the sleeves and shoulders. Most of the lettering is blue. The retro D globe is represented in pink, black, blue, and yellow. We found at the Port of Entry in Epcot and as well at Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort, it's $74.99. In addition to the spirit jersey, there's also a balloon pin. The vault uh, limited release pin is part of uh, this new Mickey Balloon series. The pin features five balloons all made up of different colors coming out of the Walt Disney World logo in blue. The balloons again have that grid pattern and we found it at Port of Entry as well at Epcot for $17.99. Walt Disney World is poised to more than double their solar energy resources with the construction of two new solar arrays. This means 40% of Walt Disney World energy will be generated by the sun. See the universe energy isn't dead. The 75 megawatt solar array will cover 1,000 acres with almost half a million solar panels in Gilchrist County and Polk County. The arrays will be capable of producing over 375,000 uh, megawatt hours of carbon-free solar energy in their first year, the equivalent of removing 29,500 cars from the road. They'll help Disney reduce their carbon footprint and make them one of the largest solar consumers in Florida. Disney hopes to have both arrays online by early 2023. You can see a video from Disney Parks on our website about the solar arrays. The Royal Portrait Studio inside Sir Mickey's of the Magic Kingdom has reopened, likely to prepare for the imminent reopening of the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique nearby. Sir Mickey's is across from the boutique behind the castle. The Royal Portrait Studio is at the back of the store. First opened in 2019, around the same time as the new Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique location across the way. There are shelves and cabinets covered in themed props, and among the props are Disney plush of Olaf, Mushu, Hey Hey, and more. Picture frames hang on the walls to be used as props, and photos in the studio are only available as a photo pass package. Guests cannot take their own photos. Uh, lights are set up pointing at the set. There's a backdrop of two faux windows looking out onto a woodsy scene, and between the windows are faux uh, white columns. There are small benches for guests to sit on the photos as well. And though the Royal Portrait Studio is separate from the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique, it is the perfect spot for princesses and their family to get their photo taken after partaking in that experience. So again, uh, Disney has still not said anything about the boutique, but this seems to be another step towards their reopening. The Ice Age Scrat Tales sand sculpture is no more at Animal Kingdom and is now celebrating the upcoming release of Polar Bear, the newest Disney nature film. The new sand sculpture can be seen surrounded by plants outside the park. As you might expect, it features several polar bears. The background is sculpted to look like columns of ice or rock, and the Disney Plus logo has a touch of blue in it, but the rest of the sand is uncolored. The Disney Nature and Polar Bear logos are at the center, and there are adult polar bears cuddling up with their babies. A flat polar bear carving is on the side as well. 
Dino Bite Snacks at Animal Kingdom is serving up two new cold brew treats for the spring. We swung by to try out the cold brew float. It's Joffrey's Coffee French Roast Cold Brew with Haagen-Dazs Vanilla Ice Cream. The float is $5.99. The review at WDWNT.com. Super Dry has filed a lawsuit against Disney. Florida Politics reports claiming Disney wants to kick them out of their Disney Springs location early. Disney reportedly gave Super Dry notice in October that they were terminating the store's lease early due to a lack of sales during the COVID pandemic. An October 28th letter from Disney reads, quote, a representative of landlord will be in contact with you to discuss the orderly winding down of operations and vacating the premises. The lease was supposed to end this Monday, March 28th, but the store was still open on Thursday, March 31st. Florida Politics spoke on the phone to a manager who did not seem familiar with the lawsuit and stated, quote, we are in negotiations to renew our lease right now. We are still working with Disney. Super Dry generated receipts of between three and three and a half million annually from July 2016 through June of 2019, the lawsuit states. Disney Springs and the rest of Walt Disney World were then forced to shut down in March of 2020. Disney Springs reopened in May of 20 and the Super Dry location reopened a few weeks later in June. A new line of Toy Story Pizza Planet apparel has arrived at Walt Disney World, matching the Spirit Jersey released last year. The collection includes a bomber jacket, a ringer tee, a pair of shorts, a t-shirt, a tank, and a button-up, which I had to have. We found the new items with the old Pizza Planet merchandise at World of Disney. You can check them out on our website. The limited edition cookie available at Gideon's Bakehouse in Disney Springs this month is Toasted Coconut Caramel Chocolate Chip. The menu this month is the summoning, of, uh, the summoning Song of Lydia Lovecraft, featuring the character of Lydia playing the liar and surrounded by ghosts. It's a caramel cookie coated with chocolate chips and toasted coconut flakes. It costs $6, the review on our website. Disney's Typhoon Lagoon Water Park is serving up a new 50th anniversary treat, the Ice Dream Sand Pail Sunday. The souvenir 50th anniversary bucket full of ice cream and cupcakes can be found at Happy Landings Ice Cream next to Castaway Creek. It's vanilla and birthday cake flavored soft serve, iridescent sprinkles, waffle cone pieces, rainbow cake, hot fudge, caramel sauce, whipped cream, and a cherry layered into a Walt Disney World 50th anniversary water park sand pail bucket for $15.99. Like other Walt Disney World Resort hotels, the Contemporary is celebrating Easter with a display of chocolate eggs. The Contemporary's bakery team, led by pastry chef Jeff Barnes, created the display inspired by Mary Blair's artwork and the 50th anniversary. According to the sign, the display contains over 250 pounds of chocolate. It's also how I've been described. There are five hidden <laughs> five-legged goats on the display. Rabbit figures are mixed in with the chocolate eggs, and one egg is purple with colorful flowers and golden 50 at the center. Another is covered with the names of the bakery team. One egg is shaped like crooked branches with a candle and butterflies inside, and another seems to be inspired by the It's a Small World clock with perky numbers and colorful flowers. The egg at the center appears to be covered in gold leaf, and below it, Easter items available for purchase at Contempo Cafe are displayed. One egg is modeled after Jeff the Pastry Chef. He has a mustache and a chef's hat, atop with a hen. New designs have been added to the columns of the Porta Cochet at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort, which opened last year as part of a major reimagining of the resort's entrance. The area is supported by eight brown columns. These have been plain since that reopened. Some people have complained that this whole thing looked a little drab, maybe a little industrial. So now they've gone and they've painted these little accents on them. Is it better? I don't know. It still looks a little funky. You decide. Tell us in the comments, does it look good or does it not? A new ear headband featuring Tinkerbell is now available at Disneyland Paris in honor of the resort's 30th anniversary, which is why we've decorated the set. 30th anniversary coming up in a few days. Disneyland Paris shared a photo of the ears on Instagram. They can be found at the World of Disney and Disney Village. The ears are covered in gold sequins, and the mini bow is black with gold and silver stars on it. The charm at the center of the bow is a golden version of Sleeping Beauty Castle with Tinkerbell's silhouette in front of it, and the actual headband is black. The Disneyland Paris ambassador shared a post on Instagram celebrating the 900 cast members who have been working at the resort since it opened 30 years ago. They shared a photo of the 900 original cast members celebrating their 30th anniversary, along with a photo of the park's 16,000 cast members in a video about the originals. Here's what the ambassadors wrote, quote, 16,000 cast members make Disneyland Paris shine bright, and today we wanted to celebrate the 900 of them who've been here since the very beginning and even before. These pioneers took part in the opening of Disneyland Paris on April 12, 1992, and have been making magic ever since. Just one week before the 30th anniversary, we invited them for a group picture that will surely make history. Thank you, Pioneers, for all these years filled with emotions and unforgettable memories. 
Disney Cruise Line has announced that physical distancing will end except for character interactions and self-service buffets will return to their cruise ships starting April 1st. Uh, that's right, they are back in action. Buffets back on cruise ships. The world is healing. For the absolute latest Disney Parks news, head on over to WDWNT.com and follow us on your favorite social media platforms. This program is brought to you by our official travel agent sponsor, The Vacationeer, the engineers of your next magical vacation. Sit back and let their team of vacation planning experts craft your family's next magical trip. The best part, their services are free. Visit WDWNT.travel for details. If you're enjoying the show, be sure to like this video, subscribe to WDW News Today on YouTube for more great content, and click the bell for notifications. Also, hit select all notifications so you never miss an episode of the show. Uh, also, don't miss, we have two great videos up where we play some of the Funko board games related to the Disney parks. We played It's a Small World and Haunted Mansion. And if you watch both of those, you can enter to win a Funko Pop ride of Mickey in Space Mountain. He's in the Space Mountain rocket. It's very cool. And again, if you watch both, you can enter to win uh, that really cool collectible. But check them out. Even if you're on the fence about buying these board games, you should check out the video. We had a good time playing them. You can also support the entire team behind the show by joining the WDWNT Inner Globe Society at patreon.com slash WDWNT. For the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news, this is Tom Corliss saying, enjoy the rest of your today, and have a great big beautiful tomorrow. Welcome to Disney Entertainment News Today from WDW News Today. I'm Rob Whiteside from WDWNT.com, and here now are the top Disney entertainment stories for the latest in Disney Entertainment news, watch Disney Entertainment News Today, hosted by Rob Whiteside. From movies and series news to stage shows, books, video games, and more, new episodes drop every Tuesday on Unplanned Downtime.